Hola. Hello and welcome to Somos Uno. As always, we strive to create an asset that serves those in the Latino community. And of course, with the help of today's special guest, we're going to seek to create ties with the places, the culture, and the history of this amazing city. Today we are here, Lily, and we're starting our new show called Somos Uno. That's right. And I am Ignacio Ventura, and this is my beautiful host. Lily Fivefield. And Lily, tell me a little bit about what Somos Uno means to you. Well, I think it's great that we start off this way since our viewers are barely getting to know us. So Ignacio, what Somos Uno means to me is that we're all one. You know, sometimes you'll say, I'm American, but where does your family come from? And somebody always has different roots, even if it's Native American, you know, it's like, where do you come from? But we're all the same here in the U.S. We're all one. And again, in the city that we're at, we have people from all over the world. And again, Somos Uno means we are one, so I really do believe we're one. What about you, Ignacio? Tell me. You know, same thing. I think that in San Diego, we are so lucky to have to be such a huge melting pot mm -hmm. of people from all different places and, you know, just parts of the world. You know, being a military town, it actually brings people from every, you know, just end of the earth and they love it here so much yeah. and they just stay here, which is amazing. Don't want to leave. Nobody <laughs> wants to leave. So to me, Somos Uno means that we are one community. We all want the same thing for our families, for a future, for our kids. So Somos Uno encompasses our one community to me. That's beautiful and I think that's what our viewers are really gonna like about this show is that we're gonna offer something for everyone, offer some resources, you're gonna offer some real estate info and I think as one, we're gonna be able to make this really good show for you guys. Absolutely, so let's get started with Somos Uno. Every client. Every client. Every client. Every client. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. No exceptions. No exceptions. No exceptions. No exceptions. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. Every client. Every time. No exceptions. No excuses. Well, joining us now is a very special man that you guys are going to get to know very well. And he's here to tell us how through his life, he's achieved a lot, but he's always stayed true to his Latino roots. Again, I have Ignacio Ventura with us. He is going to be your host at Somos Uno. And through the show, I know that he's going to want to inspire you. So let's take it all the way back to the beginning, how everything started. Tell us a little bit more. Lily, I'm so excited. Thank you for... for Give me the opportunity to share my story with our viewers. I was born in Mexico City. Uh, my parents obviously are natives of Mexico. And when I was a child, my dad was a taxi driver in Mexico City. So he worked, you know, the graveyard shift and would come home at, you know, probably four in the morning. And, um, you know, I remember being a little kid and during the day we had to be quiet because dad's yeah. sleeping. Um, and we lived right next to the big stadium in Mexico City, El Estadio Azteca. And so I remember being a kid and actually watching the soccer games on TV. And so I would hear a goal being scored mm -hmm. outside. And then I would run to the TV because I know it was about to come on TV five seconds later. Um, and so my dad being a, a cab driver, you know, one night, unfortunately, he was mugged. But there's also what comes with a big city comes a lot of dangers. And um, I think to put in perspective, it's very similar to New York. The traffic, if you're a taxi driver in New York, you're in traffic all day. It's a really big city. And again, with a big city, like you said, comes crime. It does. It does. And unfortunately, we were at a point where my dad came home, told my mom the story, said, hey, here's what happened to me at work today. And obviously, my mom was distraught and, you know, she was very sad. And my dad just at that point told her, if I keep doing this, I am going to die one day and I won't be coming home. He started thinking, what else can I do? And mm -hmm. so at that point, uh, he had some friends that lived here in San Diego, in Escondido, okay. and uh, contacted them and said, hey, you know, I need to make a change. I need to go somewhere else. I need to find some job. I'll do whatever I have to do. So that's where you got it from, taking action right away. <laughs> you have to, you know. When something doesn't work yeah. out and you need to make a change, you do mm -hmm. it. And, and you go do it and you just, you know, trust that everything is going to be fine. And so that's what my dad did. He left us and he said, I will be back. I will bring you guys with me someday. Um, did you think that was actually going to happen in that moment? Or? I trusted my dad. Okay. So when your dad tells you, yeah. I'm going to come get you, that's you beautiful. expect, yeah. you know, to have him come get you. 
And so, you know, several months went by where we actually just received letters from my dad saying, hey, I'm okay, I'm working, it's hard, you know. And I remember this one time we got a letter that said, Teresa, my mom's name, um, sell everything. Sell all the furniture, everything you have. And we packed the suitcase and headed for TJ. Wow. So Tijuana, again, a border city, also known for a lot of crime. Were you guys scared making this trip by yourself without your dad? Absolutely. Now, keep in mind, I'm talking about the mid-80s, where <laughs> there wasn't cell phones, yeah. there wasn't communication as easy as it is now. Yeah. And, you know, my dad called. Actually, as soon as we got to, to Tijuana, my mom was instructed to call my dad. Said, hey, call me as soon as you're there. And so she did. And then my dad told her, okay, tomorrow morning at 7 a.m., a, a man's going to come. And he's going to help you to come see me. Mm -hmm. And so, sure enough, the next day, we, we get a, a knock on the door of the hotel room, and we, we have this guy tell us, okay, let's go. And what are you doing with a suitcase? You can't take that with you. Oh you can gosh. only carry what you can wear. No. So you guys come here. You come to San Diego. You're still here, which is amazing, because I know Escondido is your own town. That's where you're from. I know that <laughs> you've been there your whole life. So tell us how it was growing up after that. Was it a struggle? It was a struggle. You know, when we got here, um, you know, we actually you know, shared a house with a ton of people, you mm -hmm. know, like most immigrants do. And then I didn't speak any English. So when I first got here, I knew the basic words, table, chairs, and stuff like that. So um, I had to learn English from, from, from scratch. And I know you told me there was a special event that inspired you to get you to where you are here today. There was. You know, when I was in high school, my parents uh, were fortunate enough to be able to purchase a home. And when this happened, you know, they, un I mean, unfortunately, their real estate agent and their lender were not bilingual. Mm. So that left myself to be the one translating all these documents to my parents, which, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've seen the loan documents, yes. how complicated, how thick they are. And there's some words that just don't translate, like yes. escrow, impound accounts, that is just difficult for a kid in high school mm -hmm. to explain to your parents. Um, and so, you know, my parents wanted to make sure that um, I told them everything, exactly what was in those, in, in those documents. And I did the best I could. But to be honest with you, Lily, it was very stressful because yeah. my whole livelihood and our whole house was depending on me not messing something up. But you were able to do it? I was, you know, and that's actually what inspired me to, you know, to, go, to, to, reach, to search a career in the lending industry to where I can help other families so that their kids or family members aren't stressed out and that there's couples that don't know what they're signing. And I think it's very important that they understand what they're signing because it's one of the most you know, important purchases of their life. I think that's beautiful. And I think it's beautiful that you're able to do it today in a bigger scale here at Somos. And I think we're all really excited to get all those tips that I know you have from all the years of working in the field. But thank you, Ignacio. Thank you, Libby. Stay with us. Coming up next, we have Jesse Navarro, a friend to the show, and he's with the San Diego County's District Attorney's Office. He has a lot of tips for you guys, so don't go anywhere. You're watching Somos Uno. Every client. Every client. Every client. Every client. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. No exceptions. No exceptions. No exceptions. No exceptions. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. No excuses. Every, every client. Every, every time. time. No, no exceptions. exceptions. No, no, no excuses. excuses. Uh, my guest today here is Jesse Navarro from the District Attorney's Office. Jesse, tell me a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the privilege, uh, Ignacio. It's a, it's a great privilege. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a kid that was born in Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, many, many, many years ago. You can tell by my uh, gray hair. Uh, <laughs> came to this beautiful country, the land of opportunity, went to schools over here without knowing a single word of uh, English, without knowing the culture, went to schools. And I'm about to graduate from uh, high school, and I go to my counselor, and I said, Mr. Robinson, uh, uh, I'm, I want to go to community college. And that was pretty rare back then. And he says, what would you like to do? I said, I want to be a police officer. And he said, wow, that's, uh, nobody, nobody ever said that to me. It's going to be very tough for someone of your background to be a police officer. And, of course, uh, we know what, what he meant now. Sure. He was well-meaning. I guess he's just being realistic. He says, I'm going to give you two choices. You can either be a welder or auto mechanic. And I said, Mr. Robinson, I, I really don't want to be a welder or auto mechanic. It's a wonderful job, you know, good jobs, but I, I don't want to do that. Uh, he says, well, uh, you tell me I'm going to sign you up at community college, and that's the way it's going to be. Life went on. 
I went to community college for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Then I worked for uh, Courtesy Chevrolet in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, uh, I was not bound to be a, <laughs> an auto mechanic. My supervisor came to me one day and said, you know, Jesse, got good news and bad news. Uh, you're not going to make it as an auto mechanic. Uh, we're going to have to lay you off. What would you like to do? And I said, you know, sir, I want to be a police officer. And he says, why did you study auto mechanics? Because I had no choice. That's right. what I was told. And he said to me, well, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out. Uh, you're going to get a better job. Instead of making $125 an hour, you're going to make $375 an hour. I said, whoa, <laughs> that really excited me. Yeah. Young man, you know, recently married. And I said, sir, what am I going to do? He says, you're going to be a welder. I said, my goodness. <laughs> Back to the welders. <laughs> I said, for three seventy-five an hour, fine. He says, however, I already signed you up to go to Miramar College to take criminal justice so you can realize your dream. And, you know, once I graduated, I applied every every police department you can imagine, went everywhere, and, uh, and finally, finally, I uh, had a few offers and finally got accepted to San Diego Police Department. You know, life went on. I became a very proud, very happy police officer, patrolling the streets of San Diego all over the city in 50, you know, for about 15 years. Uh, then, uh, then I became an investigator. And about 15 years ago, uh, a wonderful person by the name of Bonnie Dumanis got elected, became the first woman DA. Mm -hmm. And she knew me well, and she knew that I, I had a passion for doing community. So uh, she appointed me to be uh, the director of community relations for the San Diego County District Attorney. Not only was she the first woman uh, DA, but I became the first Latino, Hispanic, Mexican uh, wow. part of the administration of the district attorney's office. And you know, my friend, for the last 15 years, I've been doing what I'd love to do more. Absolutely working with every community, not only our wonderful Hispanic community, but every community throughout San Diego, a very diverse county. And it's been, a, it's been a, an interesting, wonderful career. But it's been... Almost 43 years. And Jesse, and you touched on community. So one of the, actually the way that I met you was back, this must be about 10 years ago, yeah. when the housing bubble burst. And you and I and a couple other people in the, in the real estate industry were actually helping the community, putting on seminars for homeowners that were losing their homes, unfortunately, and that were getting taken advantage of. And within the Hispanic community, they didn't know where to go or who to trust. Absolutely. You know, my commitment is serving the community, being a dedicated and honest uh, you know, public servant, but our office is also that way. You know, our, uh, our new district attorney, uh, Summer Stephan, is also dedicated with the same cause. One of the things that we do, we go out and educate the community about different things. Yes, we are going to prosecute some of the people that commit horrible crimes, or we are going to prosecute some of the people that are not bad people, but make horrible mistakes. That's going to continue happening. That's going to continue happening simply because that is our responsibility. But my responsibility is going out and helping the community throughout the whole county of San Diego, providing information on identity theft, real estate fraud, uh, domestic violence, DUI, uh, all kinds of different things that we provide. And it's all about prevention. It's all about educating our community and prevention. But one of the important things that we do, I want to make sure that the community has the trust and they're able to come to us without fearing for any, any other, you know, any consequences. Our goal is to have the trust. We are public servants, and we are there to serve every community in the county of San Diego without, irregardless of their political, economical, or immigration status. And that has been my passion for almost 43 years. Jesse, thank you so much for being on the show. We got to wrap it up, but I really appreciate you, and we'll have some more information for viewers to come to our website where you can get a hold of Jesse Navarro from the DA's office and utilize the resources that are here to serve our community. They're here for us. This is Somos Uno. We'll be right back with a real estate segment. My special guest today for the real estate segment is Carly Chavez with Renovation Realty. Carly, tell us about yourself. Thank you for having me in the first place. Um, well, I'm a San Diego native, born and raised here in San Diego. I grew up in a primarily Latino community in South San Diego, only minutes away from Tijuana, Baja California. 
Um, I grew up in a border town crossing, um, basically from Tijuana to San Diego, back and forth. Um, my parents really couldn't afford living in San Diego back in the 80s, so we lived in Tijuana at that time to allocate enough funds and us to finally buy something over here. Yeah. Um, once that happened, um, obviously my parents have always really taught me like the value of home ownership and the value of having a property here in San Diego or anywhere else. Yeah. No, no, that's awesome. And you know, there's a lot of people that have kind of your story where they actually, you know, lived in, in Tijuana and, and come over, you know, go, go to schools and just better themselves. And, exactly. you know, you know, part of Somos Uno is it's, it's basically that. It's, it's how are we going to better ourselves? Exactly. And, you know, as, as a community, I think everybody wants, you know, like my parents wanted better than, mm -hmm. than they did for themselves, mm -hmm. for their kid. You know, my dad... You know, at some point, you know, you know, he cleaned bathrooms and he said, you yeah. know what, son, I don't want you to be yeah. cleaning toilets like I do. Yeah. You know, I want you to go to school. I want you 100%. to get an education. And I'm sure that's the same story that your, that your parents e wanted for you. Exactly. I mean, my parents worked in the restaurant industry. My dad was a server. He had about two, three jobs, like, back and forth. He loved San Diego. He thought it was beautiful, like, everything about it. He worked at the Holiday Inn, like, right in the Harbor Drive. And he would always tell me, like, you know, he, this is where it is. This is where you're going to have better opportunities, a better life. That's awesome. So tell me, how did you get into real estate? It's something that our, my parents have always told me about homeownership and properties. My dad um, built his business in rental units. Mm -hmm. So we kind of started off of that, having a lot of rental units and building properties. And I kind of took it upon myself to get my real estate license. And I took it also upon myself because I realized a need mm -hmm. in our Latino community for more trusted real estate agents, for more trusted lenders. Um, and I knew I just wanted to help that specific community as well. Absolutely. And, you know, so renovation realty, I know you guys do something a little bit different mm -hmm. than what an average real estate agent does. Can you tell me some more about that? Yes. I mean, renovation realty is a very unique business. Um, basically, we help sellers uh, renovate for them, no out-of-pocket expense for them to get the most money out of it. So basically, they keep all the added profit. And whatever it is, 5K, 8K, um, that cost of the renovation gets deferred at the close of escrow. So, I mean, there's no catch, no hidden fees. Um, it's not a loan. It's the same as a cash. Uh, we're just basically adding more value to your home. And that's amazing, you know, because as you know, you know, curb appeal is, is a yes. big part of, you know, the perception when yes. people come to see the home, yes. the price point that you're going to sell a home. Yes. And if you can invest, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, and especially yes. if it's your money, that the homeowner doesn't yeah. have to put I up. I mean, the homeowner doesn't put anything. It's basically us putting in that money, and this cost gets deferred at the close of escrow, and they keep all the added profit. And honestly, most of the time, the Latino community as well, we don't maybe have the cash to get a HELOC or have this cash just laying around somewhere. Like, we put it in for you. We're just here to help others. Absolutely. So can you tell me a little bit about your listing today? Um, we have a listing at 4023 Debbie, Debbie Ann Place in South San Diego. It's a four-bedroom, two-full bath. It's about 1,700 square feet. It's beautiful. We just completely renovated. We put new floors, new appliances. Uh, we painted it interior and exterior, new cur curb appeal as well, like right. you said, uh, new light fixtures. We invested about 90K in this home. Wow. And we're actually listing it for 480 to 520. And we just put it on the market yesterday. And we're going to have it open the whole weekend. So come by, visit me. I'll be there all weekend um, from 12 to 4 on Saturday, tomorrow from 2 to 5. Um, I also could have probably been there today as well if I wanted to come by here. But, I mean, it's a great community, great place to, to build, you know, have a family there. That house is just, it's perfect. You know, it's super clean. It yes. almost looks like a brand new home. Yes. Yes, it really does look like a brand new home. And that's what we did. We put those beautiful little touches that it needed. You know, one of the great things about the price point that you have right now is, I mean, that's a great price point for like a first-time home buyer, yes. you, you know, kind of situation. Yes. And, you know, most of our Hispanic buyers yes. are 
first time home buyers and they can probably purchase something like that with like three and a half percent down, say with like an FHA loan. Mm -hmm. um, and especially once you guys have gone in there and taken care of, of some of the deferred maintenance, whereas if the homeowner had not taken care of it, it mm -hmm. this property could not get financed FHA otherwise. So I think that's a huge selling point for you guys as well. 100%. I mean, we got it ready for an FHA and VA approved home. So it's very easily to attainable for the average home buyer that's out there. I think that's amazing because, you know, when, when somebody wants to go into their first home, you know, they don't want to walk into a place where they have to do exactly. a ton of repairs. And honestly, most people that are going to buy their home, like for the very, very first time, they don't have an extra 10, 20, 30,000 to right. go in and do exactly what you guys do. Right. So I think this is a great solution. Yeah. And I, I definitely appreciate what you guys do with Renovation Realty. Yeah. Um, and, you know, with you having open houses, definitely, you know, yeah. reach out to the Hispanic community and, you know, we're very loyal. Yeah. You know, you know, they, no, definitely, definitely. So, uh, well, for more information, uh, please come to our website and as well, um, please reach out to Carly. And Carly, where can they get a hold of you if they'd like to get more information on this home? You can either get a hold of me by my cell phone, um, email address. Um, I'm always like a phone call away. My number is 619-495-1339. And my email is kchavez at renovationrealty.com. And again, yo hablo español. Yo estoy aquí para ayudar a la comunidad Perfect. hispana. Y me encanta lo que yo hago y lo, nomás estoy aquí para ayudarlos a ustedes. Thank you very much, Carly. We well, appreciate you being on the show with us and we'll definitely keep you guys in mind for any homeowners that might need some help with, you know, getting their homes renovated and getting put on the market. Thank you. Uh, please stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Somos Uno. Welcome back to Somos Uno. Today I have a very special guest for a real estate segment, Angel Lara with Realty One. Yes. Angel, how did you get into real estate? So I got into real estate with um, just being in the business in general ever since a little kid uh, in, in different businesses throughout my life. I, I've had three mentors as a child and they were all very successful. Uh, they, they're st still currently very su successful. Um, they they all three had uh, real estate in common. And Wonderful. so I really try to figure out um, the way to get out of poverty, to the way the resource, um, the way they've made it, the way um, to have the, the freedom that they did. And, and the common thing that they had was they all had real estate in their portfolio. And so that's what was my biggest motivation to get into real estate. You know, the, the real estate industry is awesome. You know, as, as yeah. an agent, you know the flexibility that it provides you. Um, it's also very stressful. It, it's yeah. a very stressful job because what most people don't realize is that you can go to work every day from 8 to 6 p.m. at night. And if you don't close an escrow, you don't yeah. get paid. So, um, so you have a listing for us that you want to talk about today. Yes. So I currently have a listing. It is in Vista. It um, is a two bedroom, one bath, a phenomenal, phenomenal listing. Um, everything's pretty much remodeled, flooring, mm -hmm. granite countertops, new paved backyard, new roofing, um, washer dryer, professionally installed air conditioner, um, a perfect uh, first time home buyer uh, house, um, zero HOA, phenomenal, phenomenal location, asking price 350. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, I'll be more than happy to help any family members that are looking to move in the neighborhood in North County. And you know, so. that's that's an amazing price point. You know, 350 per yeah. home. I mean, anywhere, I mean, especially like in North County and Vista, to have your own home. I mean, you know, because you know up in that, in that market, obviously, you know, my office is in, in San Marcos. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we know that area very, very well where, the, where rents are nowadays. Yeah. You know, rents are just going through the roof. And so, you know, it comes to a point where if you're renting a house, you know, you start saying, well, it doesn't make more sense for me to buy. And at some point, you know, some people say, you know what, it does. It, because there's, there's many benefits of being a homeowner. Like, you know, what, what are some of the things that, you're, you know, that your clients ask you? Okay, so why should I buy a home? Like, like what's important? Like, like, what value does that bring to them? Yeah, like, so I, I believe it brings a lot of value. A lot of value. Uh, the main value um, is education for the f future generation coming along, especially if... There's a family involved to teach the kids about um, investing, investing in your future, investing in real estate, the, uh, the, the process, um, you know, uh, rent, it just basically get thrown to the trash, it gets 
to the landlord's pockets and rent just keeps increasing um, every year. Every year I had a client call me and said, hey Angel, my rent just went up another $300. And, wow. You know, and, and it's just um, having your own property, there, there's nothing like it. You know, yeah. th there has to be a cornerstone to every family's financial situation. And, yeah. you know, I strongly believe, and I'm sure you do too, that, you know, owning your own home has to be that cornerstone. You know, yeah. that's a place where, one, your rent isn't going to go up, like you just said, like that client, $300 yeah. more a month. I mean, that's, that's a lot of money. And, uh, you know, if, if we can get more clients to kind of understand that, that it's not just buying a house. It's more than that. It's buying a place where it's your own. You can paint it whatever color you want. You can exactly. add square footages. You can fix up the yard, the backyard, yeah. whatever you want to do. And there is that pride of ownership. I mean, you know, you can definitely see it. Like when you, I know one of the things that you do is you do a lot of door knocking. A lot and, of door knocking. And so yeah. when you go out there, and I mean, that's hard work, man. I'm telling you, yeah. I, I definitely respect for that because, you know, when I was a young loan officer, I, I went out and did that with an agent. Yeah. And so we did that in Vista. And so just door knocking, you don't know what you're going to get. You, you don't know who's going to open the door. You don't know what it is. But you know what? You're going there and putting yourself out there saying, you know what? I'm here. I want to serve you. I want to help you get out of this situation. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the things that I appreciate about you most, that you're, that, that you're hustling, man. You don't want anything for free. You're working hard, and you're out there serving the community, and you know, you're, you're in the heart of it. Yeah. So, um, Angel, if... We have viewers that want to get a hold of you. Like if they have any more questions, would like some more information about your listing, about yourself, how do they get a hold of you? So my direct contact, um, my cell phone number is area code 858-216-6900. Um, uh, I always answer my phone, no matter what time of the day it is. I know uh, that for sure, man. You Absolutely. know, 9 o'clock at night. I, I recommend don't call me at midnight. <laughs> but... Um, Anytime during the day, I'm always available. Once again, my phone number is 858-216-6900. Um, and that's the best uh, form of contact to reach me. Absolutely, so. Andrew. So, you know, thank you very much for, for coming on the show, sh you know, sharing with us a little bit about your story, about this beautiful listing that we can put out there. And, you know, we'd be happy to help you guys with any, um, any uh, financing terms that you guys might need. You know, as you know, I serve the, the North County community as well. And Vista was, you know, just my backyard growing up in Escondido, San Marcos. So please, uh, you know, just definitely keep coming back to our show. We appreciate what you do. And thank you for being here with Somosuno. Thank you so much. This was Somosuno, and we'll be back with more. And with all that, we are out of time. We'd like to thank our guests, definitely Carly uh, with Renovation Real Estate for being here and showing us what is very special about their company, as well as Jesse Navarro from the DA's office and sharing with us how he can help you and protect our community, Lily. That's right. I really like Jesse. What a character, isn't he? Awesome, yeah. And thank you, Ignacio. I really, I was so inspired by your story. I think a lot of us can relate to it, being a Latina. I think we've all gone through certain circumstances that are very our own, but I think as Latinos, we can all relate to each other's stories. And of course, that's what we try to do here is let you know we are all one. We have the same stories. And for anything else, they can... I think head to our website, right? Absolutely. If you if you have a community hero that you'd like us to feature on the show, please head over to our website at Somosuno TV for more content and other giveaways. That's right. And with that, thank you very much for watching. Hasta la vista. See you later. This is Somosuno.